In the UK, deciduous woodlands are one of our richest habitats. Today, I'm going to show you some of the common animals that you might be lucky enough to find if you visit one. As I'm talking about woodlands, it seems that one of the best species to start with would be a woodpecker, specifically the UK's most common, the great spotted woodpecker. These can often be heard before they are seen, either with the repetitive call or their territorial drumming. You will probably never see a great spotted woodpecker on or close to the ground as they spend a lot of their time high in the canopy, although they do sometimes create their nesting holes only a couple of meters high. You might even be lucky enough to see their chicks poking their heads out and begging to be fed during the late spring and summer. Sticking with the theme of animals that can fly, the next woodland resident you might spot is the speckled wood butterfly. They are active from April through to October and can often be seen basking in spots of sunlight close to the woodland floor and taking flight to see off any other butterflies that enter their territory. There are 59 species of butterfly in the UK and a lot of them can be seen in woodlands or along woodland edges. Another species that usually lives in woodlands but ventures out of them frequently is the badger. Now you'd be very lucky to see a badger given they don't usually emerge from their underground homes until it begins to get dark and return again before daylight. Badgers often follow the same well-worn routes on their nightly forays for food and although they are omnivores and will eat berries and vegetables, they are in fact the UK's largest land-based predator unless you believe the stories of big cats, of course. They'll eat invertebrates, small rodents and rabbits, and are also the top predator of hedgehogs. And these are the next species I'm going to speak about. Just like badgers, hedgehogs are mostly nocturnal, although you might see them out in the late evening, especially during the summertime. Hedgehogs are covered in between five and 7,000 spines and if they are threatened, they can roll into a protective ball. Their eyesight is poor, but to make up for this, they have a brilliant sense of smell and an excellent sense of hearing. Hedgehogs mainly eat invertebrates, but will also eat small mammals, amphibians, and birds' eggs and chicks if they find them. To be safe from this, many woodland birds nest off the ground in tree cavities and that's where you might spot the UK's most common species of owl, the tawny owl. Around 50,000 pairs live in this country, and as their camouflage is really good, they'll often rely on hiding in plain sight and will roost within view. Apparently, they don't like flying over water, and as a result of this, they are not found in Northern Ireland, the Isle of Man, or on many of the other small islands that surround the UK. Tawny owls are especially adapted to hunting within woodlands. Their short wings allow them to be agile between the trees in search of prey. They are bold predators and will even take prey as large as grey squirrels, which are the next species that I'm going to speak about. Grey squirrels are an introduced and invasive species in Britain and were first released here in 1876. The idea was that they would populate the gardens of large stately homes and just like loads of other exotic animals they soon made it into the wild and have remained there ever since. They are opportunists and will eat birds eggs and chicks alongside buds, tree shoots, fruits and leaves. Grey squirrels are quite smart and store acorns and other food during the autumn to come back to and eat later when food is in short supply. Interestingly, they've been found to be either left or right-handed. And when it comes to hands, there aren't many animals in the world who have evolved hands as specialised as bats. Their fingers are joined by thin membranes which spread to make their wings and allow them to be the only mammal capable of true flight. In the UK, there are 18 species of bat with at least 12 of them using tree cavities and cracks within bark to roost. A lot of these species also hunt within woodlands and some of them are even capable of snatching insects 
from leaves and branches as they pass by. One woodland creature which is sometimes incorrectly described as an insect is the woodlouse. These are actually crustaceans and are more closely related to lobsters than they are to true insects. There are more than 30 species of woodlouse in the UK which is a tiny number compared to the 3,500 species that are found worldwide. Most of our woodlice have flattened bodies and rely on their hard exoskeletons for defence. But some of them take this a little bit further, such as the pillwood louse, which rolls into a tight ball to be completely protected. They are detritivores, which means that their diet is mostly made up of decaying material, such as fallen leaves. But there are many woodland animals that prefer their food a little closer to being alive, such as the sparrowhawk. These are the apex aerial predators of most woodlands and feed on a wide range of smaller birds. Female sparrowhawks are almost a third larger than males and with their short broad wings they are brilliant at dashing through the trees in pursuit of unwitting prey. Up to the 1970s sparrowhawks faced a long period of persecution where they were hunted almost to the point of extinction in many parts of the UK, but since then their numbers have rapidly recovered and they are now found over most of the country. Although the vast majority of their diets are made up of birds, they will sometimes catch small mammals if they can. Of course, most are far too large for sparrowhawks to catch and that's definitely the case for the UK's largest land mammal, the red deer. There are six species of deer living wild here with red deer being one of only two of them that are native. In England and Wales, red deer are mostly found in and around woodlands, where they live in small same-sex herds for most of the year. Although in Scotland and Northern Ireland, they'll often live in open countryside in much larger herds. Male red deer are known as stags and can stand at more than six feet tall, making them far larger than the next woodland species, the common toad. You might be thinking that toads live in and around water, but that's only really true for when they are breeding. The rest of their time is spent on land, and woodlands provide a great habitat for them. During the daytime, they'll often hide away, among leaf litter or in loose soil, but after dark they emerge and go in search of prey. Toads cannot chew, and mostly feed on small insects and other invertebrates which they catch with their sticky tongues before swallowing them whole. In the wild, they have an average lifespan of 8 to 10 years if they survive being a tadpole, although they have been known to live for more than 40 years. Although toads can hop like frogs, most of the time they prefer to crawl, but I hope you don't mind if I hop to the next woodland species I'm going to talk about the great tit. These small but boisterous birds are the most widespread species of tit in the world and are one of the most common birds you are likely to see if you visit a woodland in the UK. They nest within tree cavities and hollows and try to time their chicks hatching with the first emergence of caterpillars when there will be the most food available to feed them with. The call of a male great tit is one of the easiest to recognise and sounds as if the bird is repeatedly saying, teacher, teacher. Although that doesn't mean if you hear a different call that it is not a great tit. They have been recorded producing as many as 40 different noises. Now this video has been my first attempt at covering some of the common species that live in UK woodlands. But of course, there are many more habitats in this country, each with their own array of wildlife. If you enjoy watching this, then let me know which habitat you'd like to see me cover next in the comments down below. And that's all for today, but if you did enjoy this video, then you will almost definitely like this British wildlife video on the screen now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.